Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So let me uh, introduce His Holiness Janardhan Maharaj. Maharaj was born in United Kingdom and he was initiated by Srila Prabhupada in 1972. So whilst I'm giving some introduction, I will give brief snippets, some unique things about Maharaj as per my experience when Maharaj used to come to our place in India. So whilst he was initiated in 1972, Maharaj used to do book distribution and Harina in London uh, every day. And this is verbatim by Maharaj what he told me. So if I make a mistake, Maharaj, you have to forgive me if I understood it incorrectly. So Maharaj told me that when he used to do book distribution in London, every day he was caught by the police, he was put in the prison, and in the morning they would let him out because he would not have done anything wrong. And he would get a chance to speak to the prisoners and they would do Harinam in the prisons as well. So I think uh, it was very heart touching that usually when you go to the prison you may get, oh I don't want to do what I'm doing again because I'm going to jail. But Maharaj's motivation towards Krishna consciousness didn't get diffused just because he was going to jail. In fact, it motivated him even more. He held various positions in Iskon and Sir Srila Prabhupada uh, and he goes to United Kingdom, Africa, Malaysia, Europe, Philippines, Australia and New Zealand. And I'm speaking this from Iskon Desire Tree. And the next line is very heart touching because it says, His Holiness Jiran Maharaj is a very exalted devotee. So it uh, the the I should have a bigger chair. This is not high enough. You have to go to You have to put me up higher. So you can see his sense of humor as well. Yeah, I just re 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 arrange myself to be more exalted. So I will tell you uh, why this word "very exalted" is there, and I'll give you a snippet on that as well. Um, and he travels and preaches all over the world. The main driver, driving force behind the World Holy Name Initiative and wonderful projects in his con. He is also a member of committee for Kirtan Standards. So uh, Maharaj is very, very famous for his Harinams. Uh, you could see him in Mayapur due to Kirtan Melas. He will be the one um, who will be behind the rickshaws and doing Harinam and doing dancing. Um, he is uh, also part of uh, uh, Harinam committee in his con. Uh, and it says his Kirtans, Harinam, Skits, realizations, scholarliness in shastras, witty nature, we just saw that, humility, which I'm going to talk about, and all other transcendental qualities attract the most demoni demoniac souls. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, like that's all the demoniac souls. Demons like me. <laughs> to the little feet of Srila Prabhupada and Lord Krishna. So one of there are so many anecdotes that I can give and I can spend half of the class talking about Maharaj but I'll give one small snippet. So it was back in India. So this car IQY2TN Toyota needs to be moved immediately now. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. So I'm just going to give one snippet out of many snippets. Uh, so once it happened, uh, Maharaj had to travel from Delhi to Malaysia and we had to book tickets for him. And usually when we, when we as an individual, when we travel, we would usually book our, for ourselves either economy, a regular economy or even business class. <coughs> even when we were like 35, 40 years old. And Maharaj was definitely 65 plus at that time. And uh, when I was booking the ticket, Maharaj asked me, uh, please make sure before you book, you ask me. So I was booking the ticket and gave him three or four options. And Maharaj said, no, 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 no. You have to choose the budget airlines. And I don't want anything frills. I don't want frills. I want the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest ticket. So I said, Maharaj, but you don't need to worry about it. I am paying for it. So it's taken care of. I want to make sure that you're completely comfortable. But Maharaj said, no, 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 it's Krishna's money. Even if some money is saved, you give it to the temple, but I have to go in the most basic thing, because all I need is to travel from one place to another place. Why do you need luxury for this? So I was very touched, and there are so many such examples that I can talk and talk about it. 
His humility is unparalleled. I have known so many senior devotees in this con, but every time he has come to our place, uh, something or the other has happened. You know, he would sometimes go to our kitchen and start cutting the vegetables himself, or start teaching my wife how to do things in what way. You know, and in fact, when I used to do altar seva, he would teach. You know, this is the way to do it. Such a personalized. Uh, and such a loving, my kids actually absolutely love him. Now they are 18 years old, but he met them when he was 6 years old. My children still remember that he is the only sannyasi who played with them, who rolled over the soil with them. So, with that short introduction, I wanted to really thank Maharaj for coming here and giving his uh, kind association. Uh, so, we will do uh, Vansha Kalpatrupyas. So, everybody should bow. Vansha Kalpatrupyas, Chakrita Sundarpyas, Chakrita Nam Pavindhivas. And we we'll welcome Maharaj three times. Hari Bo! Hari Bo! Hari Bo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, I don't know what to say because you said everything that uh, all, the, all the praise is always to praise myself. He's already being a good thing. How much am I supposed to give you from the tapestry you can buy? You know, we fly in, so we just come to Australia, you know, we come here to get recognized as sit on a pedestal, at an elevated seat, as we heard this time. Uh, Elevated. What to do? We're all. What makes a person elevated? Materially speaking, you will have some kind of material asset of some kind. These days, you probably the financial possibility, isn't it? When a person is very affluent financially, I guess they, they, they recognize as something exalted. It's a general characteristic of value, doesn't it? Money. If you have so called money, I'm. Practically, we don't have money nowadays. We have a, some kind of computerized figure somewhere, right? We should be wiped off, we could be cancelled, just like that, we've got nothing left. Just suppress a button, we're cancelled. Isn't it? What can you do? You can scream, cry, go to the court. It can happen. Previously, people had wealth. Now, of course, we have a nice house here in, in, um, in uh, wherever we are. What do you call Point Cook. Point Cook. Huh? Point, Point Cook. Cook. Point Cook. Point Cook. Well, there's another name for this stuff. Window. 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 Point Cook or Offer Spassing or wherever it is. You may have a nice house. Even that, maybe a mortgage. I don't know. Sometimes you have to pay a mortgage, is it? It's not free, is it? It's not free. That's a penny, isn't it? All the time. All the time, up for your life, you know. Next life, if you die early. You have to come back and carry on. You know, that's lost. In this age, you don't get off the hook that easy, I tell you. It's like, you know, it's like a fish you caught on the hook. You know, it's empty, huh? Is it? I don't fish. My brother really used to be fishing. He used to like going fishing. I don't like it. Okay. But he used to like fishing. Put the, the bait, the bait on the hook, and then you come. Okay. Of course, it's caught on the, on the hook, which is inside the bait. So when two lives like that, it's like a bait. Something attractive. Huh? Family life, the wealth, Australia, Melbourne. I see most of you have not been sunbathing. I don't think you're all got colored by sunbathing in Melbourne. You're probably all coming from India, right? Yeah. Is there anyone from India? <laughs> Who's from India? Anyone? <laughs> no, it's not everyone. <laughs> There's an elderly lady over there. She didn't put her hand up. I think she's from India. You're not from India. Where are you from? Malta. Really? Amazing. What are you doing here? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I thought you had that. It's a bridge, is that? It's a, maybe, I'm giving no choice, they would send it to Tasmania or something, if you didn't agree with them. Um, but then, Krishna told me, your parents came here. So you were born here or born in Malta? Pardon? Malta. Born in Malta, and your parents came over to Australia. Anyone else not from India? You're not from India? I thought you were from India. <laughs> Where are you from? Originally from Holland. Oh, well, I'm really? You were Dutch. That explains it. Could have a cat, I just don't say that. Many wonderful devotees from Holland. Who else is not from India? Where are you from? Nepal is the same name. <laughs> now, traveling with me is my man, but who is from Slovakia in Europe? You may not know where that is. It's in Europe. You know where Europe is. He's from Slovakia. 
Ő el halad, ha várja, ma új rogy, ő pénz sorozni. Úgy nevű gesztő lett a... Hogy itt van? Hogy itt van? India. India, igen. Oh, it's someone behind us, huh? Mauritius! Wow. And maybe one or two Mauritius again. And then they call you to that. But also an Indian... So beautiful. Fantastic. It's beautiful to see. Our Krishna consciousness, first of origination, you could say, in what we call India, but now it's spreading all over the world, even here to part of Australia. Look at the window everywhere. And people of all races are fine because it's the nature of the soul. It's not just a, a religion. Sometimes people say it's a new religion. It's not. It may be practiced by Hindus. It may be a part of what we call the Hindu religion. But it's more than that. This is the constitution, the nature of every being. Not just those born in India. You have the privilege in one sense. We grow up with it, you know. We grow up in Europe, maybe a little Christianity, I don't know. In Holland, maybe the Christianity is still there, I don't know. Not very emphasized in Holland. Very, very good. Islam has now become the main religion in Holland, did you know that? Almost 50% Islam. You say, but maybe 10, 20 years, the majority will be Islam. But generally in Europe we have a little Christianity, but it's very vague. There's no knowledge of the soul. Right? Practically none. Reincarnation is like a, a, a work of the devil. Or when they talk about heaven and hell, go in there and this and that. See, the idea of yoga is not just in Christianity. In other so-called religious areas too, these things are like almost taboo. They even punish people in the past for these type of things. Vegetarianism was, it's not now, but it was almost like a, a sacrilege. It was like against religion almost. In some different minds. Changing. And in fact, we see in the Western world now, a high number of people believe in the soul. They don't know what it is. We ask people, who are you? Well, people say, I think I'm a soul. I don't really know much about it. And you ask me, well, do you believe in reincarnation? Almost a high percentage of people do know. Not like before. Vegetarians, I don't know the figures, but it's a very high number now. 10, 20 percent. It was initially almost near, near, zero. Almost zero, about 50, 60 years ago. But there are changes taking place. In fact, one time, one of the, the uh, Vegetarian Society, I think it was in America, the, uh, the head of the society said, the main influence of people becoming vegetarian is your swami. Your swami. All the Hare Krishna restaurants everywhere. We have fantastic restaurants here in Melbourne. Right? I'm sure most of you have been to Gopal's and Crossways and Radhe's. More civil one go. You've got four, haven't you? One more, I think some people are running another one. It's a fact, it's amazing that, you know, this is, people being attracted in one sense. In another sense, it's not. Because Krishna is all attracted. He's all attracted. Actually, everyone's, perfect by Krishna, but everyone is looking for Krishna. We just don't know him. But everyone is looking. Everyone is looking for happiness. Hare Krishna. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. The more the better. <laughs> I had one girl brother, his name is Radha Kudin. He was from America. Um, maybe 10 years ago. Quite some years ago, he would, he'd been living in India for quite a long time. And he, uh, he became terminally ill with cancer. And he was on his last, literally his last few days. Um, he was in Mumbai, and then they go into Vindavan. And when he arrived in Vindavan, you know, God had to say. And many people came to see him. 
we were in his room, and he was there, and everybody was coming with garlands. And gradually he was disappearing on the flower gardens. <laughs> and someone said, the pools, stop, stop. You know, because they were quite heavy. And it was like almost covering his whole body. And his face, you could just see his eyes, a little bit popping out. And someone said, stop. Otherwise he might suffocate. He said, bring more garlands. <laughs> if I die like this, I would be the most fortunate person to be in a mansion. Leaving a body under a mansion of garlands off of the Krishna, the Goshen Mani. Most people don't have this, most of the perhaps don't have it either, to some degree. Um, but this is uh, something which we're really looking for. You never find it in a material world. Can you really find true happiness in this world? Can you really find true peace? Can you really find true love? Something is there, obviously. But do we really, is it really satisfying us? Is it really satisfying us? We're always looking for something more. Never, we cannot be, everything is temporary in this world. This is not a religion, it's a fact. These are facts. They're not religion. People are suffering. Nothing to do with Hindu, Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, atheist. Everyone has to experience it. Isn't it? Everyone has a similar propensity. There are detailed differences with the body and money, but the internal nature is different. We're all angry, maybe in different ways. We're all happy for satisfaction. The nature of soul, and that's the way of yourself. It's pleasure seeking. And life is based on even the austerities which we may undergo, study, or working hard, whatever it may be, in terms of poor, whatever it is. But they're all, nonetheless, related to this endeavor of trying to become satisfied. And how can material, material objects, which are temporary, satisfy the soul? Or satisfy the us? We want something permanent. There's nothing worse than losing something because we're very attached to them. Everyone's experienced that. When you lose something you're attached to, how do you feel? How do you feel? Feel good? You know, I guess most of you are attached to your own money or your mobile, or your bank cards, or your passport, or something. You've probably got some wallet in your pocket, or something like a purse. And when you come, you know, you, you, you go to your wallet, and it's gone. Oh, fantastic, what a great day, I'm so fortunate. I've got lost, been stolen. I'm the most fortunate person on the planet. This is marvelous. Do you feel like that? Probably not. Quite the opposite. Even your mobile. You know, you panic as soon as you can't find it after a short while. You know, your brain starts looking, what am I going to do now? Cancel this, call this, do this, do that. Great anxiety, mobile phone. We've created all these things which create anxiety. And we've been attached to it. And the final result is anxiety. Stress, anxiety, grief, or whatever. And stress, where you go? Stress. Our creative society has probably, I mean, their own, own recognition, they recognize that the stress levels are rather high. Isn't it? What do you think? Yes or no? Not sure. Silence. Maybe we're too stressed out to eat nice. <laughs> but it's, medically speaking, it's a fact. High stress levels. A lot of the sickness that we face today is also related to it. Medically speaking. High stress levels. Nervous, anxious, so many things. Mobile phone. They need to be warnings. I've got a mobile phone, but you know. People smoke cigarettes all over the world. 
Now of course of all time of disease and women and dates. Then they mobile us, you know, mobile us calls, you know, something like that. Radiation waves or stuff like that. We just take it some more. The whole world is just like a delay like this. Missing the real purpose of our existence. Are we any happy? Are we really any happy with it? We think it's a necessity, you can't live without it, you've got to pay your mortgage, you've got to pay your education fees, your medical fees, your transport fees, your insurance, your this, your that. So we're entangled in this world, locked up, you can hardly move like this. Even in Australia, we have so much space, we can hardly move. We're surrounded by so many people, we're lonely. We have all modern conveniences to their stress. We have only many advanced medical systems and we're sick. We have science, so much advanced in science, not nobody can avoid death. In fact, nobody is really living any longer. You, you can measure the, the lifespan, they say it's getting older. Even if it is, it's only very small. But they do not take into account that every single day on this planet there are around about nearly 200,000 abortions on this planet every day. Shabbos, you can see the day of life, life of day. They don't even kind of make the statistics a little different. But what do you do about it? You're mostly from India descent. Now, and you've got this golden opportunity, it's all in your blood. As Dershanath has said, but in your people in general, you know, Krishna consciousness is pretty covered for most people. But in your people, it's like you scratch the surface, and there it is. It's like a gold mine. You know, in Johannesburg in South Africa, it was famous for gold. And the gold was right near the surface. You just dig in your garden and you find gold. Actually, that's not. Because it's not like that now. It was. But it's just here. It's not so far to the surface. We just have to, it's a little bit scratch it. We just have to look at it. But it's there. And there's so much to share. In fact, Lord Chaitanya, Krishna, his devotion, as a devotee, he would hear, they brought him, they brought him, they take home. Yeah, well, that's good. He's lazy also. Part of the Bhumi is the way of the Nishi Jantaka. Janma Satyakara Kara, part of the Tukara. So it's born in India, Indian Bharata Bhumi. So it's born in Bharata. Should make their life successful. How do you make their life successful? Coming to Melbourne, getting a good job in IT, and a nice house in Point Cook. <laughs> That's how you make them successful, right? Is that what Lord Chaitanya said? <laughs> what do you think? Yes? They just seem to think it's a good idea. Death on a little embarrassed. No, he said, make your life successful. How do you make your life successful? Well, what they just said, is that success? What's wrong? Can't answer yes or no? No. No. No, no. 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 okay. Well, well maybe well, why are we doing it? Okay, there's other sections for of course. But how can we make ourselves our lives successful? Is that like that, no? Yes. <coughs> Don't worry, right, I couldn't quite hear it. He's louder than you. <laughs> it's amazing how they have an amazing, strong voice. Little tiny kid. It's big. You can hear it from like a kilometer away sometimes. <laughs> it's an incredible, powerful way of tracking their voices. Ooh, <laughs> straight through the ether for the far distance. Yes. 
Right? Being Krishna consciousness. Being Krishna consciousness. Oh, that's really a devotional aspect. That's saying, fantastic. But being Krishna conscious, what does that mean? I mean, you can say being conscious of Krishna. That's what I'm saying. But how does that make you happy? And with that, is there another program going on behind the wall? <laughs> it sounds very interesting. What's going on behind me? Is that the kids? Yes. How many kids are there? Thirty. Twenty-five. Twenty-two. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Fantastic. <laughs> so how, how does that make you happy? Being Christian, maybe you say, well, actually, if I think about it, it doesn't. No, but if it does, how does it make you happy? It says, Shushukam Kartama Payam. Pardon? It says, Shushukam Kartama Payam. 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 Because when you surrender to the Krishna, He gives you peace of mind and you get stress free. And that makes you be happy. That's a good, good one. That's a big one. Uh, it's a secondary one, but it's a big one. You get peace of mind and you become stress free. Now, a lot of people want that, don't they? Probably most people want it. The flesh is stress free, in a sense. Yeah, we can be peaceful if we surrender in the good word, surrender to Krishna. Anything else? When we please Krishna, we will lead us. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we please Krishna, we will lead us. When you surrender to Krishna in love and devotion, what happens then? And serve. And serve. And you get the peacefulness and also be Krishna conscious. You become peaceful? You will be stress free and then get And stress free. Good. And this is standing on your point with more details. Anything else? Yes. We are part and parcel of Krishna, so when we serve Krishna, then we very philosophical one here, isn't it? You're part and parcel of Krishna. That's quite a statement. Most people don't know what it means. I mean, many people, even on first, are sort of part and parcel of Krishna. What does that mean? Unusual term. How, does it, how can you describe that, that you're part and parcel of Krishna? That would give an example. I don't know if everything, but that would give an example. To illustrate this, let's say, for instance, a fingernail. Not the best example, but it can be the catch. Let's say, let's say something a bit better, an ear. 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 It's, it's, it's a part of the body that's not whole. Hmm? When you're part of the body, it's a part of the body. So it's part of the body. So the living end is a part of the whole in that sense. We could say that. Now, if the ear is separated from the body, are you happy? Is it, is it nice? I don't know if anyone here has ever had that experience. It's probably not very nice. I mean, if anything, it's been somebody who may have lost a limb or a finger, different things, even that's not very nice, is it? When you lose your finger or something, it happens. When you, not very nice. You don't feel happy about it, do you? When a when finger is attached to the body, you don't think about it much, but actually, it's, you're experiencing the, the finger doesn't separate the spirit, but you're experiencing happiness. So the soul, simply when separated from the whole, is, it can't really experience happiness. Have you ever, you know, do that, and I'm sure you know quite well what the do that, is. It's very sweet. Yeah, sweet. Decoration. 
um, when we try the hand tries to enjoy it on its own, will it be happy? We don't think so. Have you got the good hands on the menu tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. But say that it's good afternoon. Then your hand suddenly decides, I am not going to give it to the house. I am going to enjoy it myself. We don't have a problem now. In fact, that may happen. If the coordination is lost, the hand acts in defense, seems to act in the So the hand takes the ink for that. How can it enjoy the good hand? What can it do with it? No. Freeze it. Blow it. What else can it do? Flatten it. What else? Huh? Break it. Break it. Different things. You might get a little bit of it in a little bit. That was great. I smashed the glue lab. But there's no glue lab left to smash after that. And what next? So it's like that in the chair world. We try to enjoy the energy of God. We can only enjoy the little bit. And then time takes it away. It's gone. And even once we've got it, I said, I'm not satisfied. There's some disturbance. The other entity behaves in a way that brings us disturbed and stressed. The nature is good. I mean, if you want to really be happy, you can do it like that. But the material world is not meant to be a place of trying to enjoy. Of course, by nature, we enjoy it. We want to enjoy it. But the material world is not designed to fully satisfy that propensity to come on the shash of tongue. A temporary place and a suffering, unavoidable suffering ever. Everything has its what we call constitution. Right? We take anything around us. Now, most of you here are probably. Who likes chili? Anyone like chilies? Don't be shy, it'll be an apple. Who likes chilies? Come on. If I put my hand up, maybe a few more will. Who likes chilies? Not me. Is those kind of little things from Camel now? Like you? Do. you do. Thank you for being honest. <laughs> Generally, in, in many parts of India, not just some of them, but in many places, chili is very appreciated. Long and chili is an important feedstock. But, uh, you know, if I give you a chili, oh, can I have a chili with the, with the, with the grisada, please? It's not any spice there. So you get a chili, and you taste the chili. And the chili is bitter. How do you feel? Bitter. You'd be disappointed, don't you? Very, you might like bitter food. You don't expect that to be in a chili. Or if we give you a gulab chili, to put on gulabs. Who likes gulabs? You're not very responsive, do you? You don't like gulabs. They don't like gulas. All the more for you. Yeah, we have more for ourselves. But then just say like gulas. If we don't. Let's yeah. say like a gula. And I give you a gula. Now you may have had this experience. You take a gula, you're all excited. The last preparation of the feast. A beautiful, round, shining looking gula <laughs> in what looks like you know, sugar water. A massive. Just about to taste it. To bite it. Ugh. It's bitter as it. Bitter and beautiful as it. So bitter. Ah, what is this? He said. What is this? What is this preparation? This is not a good lab. It looks like one. But they, they soak it in mean juice instead of sugar juice. <laughs> Next, right? Go away. You know, the, the definitely the cook will be running for his life. <laughs> that sometimes happens, maybe not mean juice. Something else, like many times we didn't realize it was salt. We thought it was, uh, we thought it was sugar. You put salt in instead of sugar. That's how We have one experience, many experiences in Malaysia and other 
And when this really stands out, and of course many of you have heard it before, I never forget that, and that was an incredible experience. We just had this fabulous cheer time. It was midday, we saw the program midday on Sunday. We had this amazing cheer time, and oh my goodness, sweating from head to toe, you know, fifteen to go this walk up to you. It gets really hot in the leaves, you know, 35 degrees, you know. We're all very hot, sweating. <coughs> One was a beautiful memory. Maybe took his time out to make cups of pineapple juice ready for everybody when they came out from the kitchen. What a nice thought. So we could come out and immediately quench their thirst on the pineapple juice. It's like a lot of pineapple juice in Malaysia. Yeah. So many juices. So pineapple juice. And we're all coming out from the kitchen. And this whole table, eight times bigger than this table here. Full of cups of pineapple juice. <sighs> Totally, thirsty like anything. Very eager. The boys were just grabbing the juice from all the places of them. Very relief. And then within a few seconds, bubbles are coming out of their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Spinning it out. What is this? <laughs> And as lovely the boy said, it's pineapple juice. <laughs> but this is not pineapple juice, this is horrible. It's pineapple juice, I just saw it in the kitchen, it's pineapple juice. And just as he said that, the, the cook came out, pineapple juice for booze, pineapple juice. He <laughs> looked at the cook and said, the cook looked at him and said, what have you got there? I bought the pineapple out already, you know what you what bucket have you got there? Oh, oh my god. That's the bucket I just cleaned the kitchen with. <laughs> <laughs> I looked the same, it's fine. It was brown and, you know, bubbles have settled down. Kind of looks like it's a little bumpy sometimes, if you can notice that. It was sort of salt water from washing down the kitchen floor and the sinks and everything else. It looked like it. We were all anticipating it, it? We're going to enjoy it like anything. Wow. Material life can be like that too. It's all this is going to make nothing. Boom. It's a constitution. The constitution of the laughter is supposed to be sweet. The mango is supposed to be sweet. Again, it's sour. I think mean, it has its constitution. And if it's not acting upon its constitution, it's not very nice. So we, the living entity, each person, every person who made their constitution, their nation. We're trying to fulfill that constitution in an unconstitutional place. This material is for to the soul, characters of the soul, is a true. That's why we never end in our desires to enjoy that, to this or whatever. That. We never like to have to give up our lives. It's a nature as a children, it's unconstitutional to experience death. It's only constitution to spirit stress or suffering in various times. It's only constitution to be in such ignorance that we're in of our identity and what happens in the biggest body, why I'm born in such and such a place, why are we subject to this, why are we born in this situation, and so on. It's not natural. The material world is the soul, the spiritual soul, is sad chip ananda. It's clear that there's eternal knowledge. The material world is asa, that means separate. It is at chip. It's covered by ignorance, causing all the problems, you could say. Because ignorance is a cause of fear, it's a cause of so many anxiety and so on. And it is near ananda. There is no real bliss. There's some sort of chakra shoot. Flickering happiness comes and goes. Sometimes you get a little bit, then it's gone. And then you have to work hard, a little bit, and it's gone. Family members, you get a little pleasure, and then it's gone. We love, we have it for me, it's gone. The nature is good, it's like that. That's it. It's not near enough. 
to resolve what by nature is the only way. It cannot possibly fulfill his existence in his particular way. So that's another aspect of relation to one of the later said to us now upon the past of Krishna. We have our constitution, Krishna has his constitution. The living entity has similar qualities to Krishna. Now the difference being is that Krishna is the reservoir of pleasure. We worship like we're in there. He's the reservoir of pleasure. So the reservoir of pleasure, imagine entering into it's a very beautiful verse, not just read it to you, second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Two quarters. How many do I think? Something like that. So this verse is very uh very before you sit. It's not very common. But in one sense it refers to this poem. Yadam Arduhudapane Sarvatakshan Tapuri. You know what it is? Who said it the Bhakti Shastri? Bhakti Shastri? Not yet. Maybe in time. Kalam Sarishu Vedishu Ramana Sarijan. Krishna said, first to Arjuna, this is a very deep verse, all purposes served by a small well, all purposes served by a small well can at once be served by a great reservoir of water. Does it make sense? We have a little pool of well of water. You may get to do so many things in there, but they're limited. But when you have a great reservoir, you can use that and many more, isn't it? In fact, when we look at the world today, sometimes there's a concern about the environment, concern about the shortage of water, different things, fresh water. Where does the water come from? Where does it come from? The tap. It comes from the tap, right? Turn the tap and the water comes. Now a child may think like that, but you might know more than that. What do you know? Pardon? Where did it come from? Rain. Where did the rain come from? Pardon? Clouds. Where did the clouds come from? Huh? Huh? The demigods. <laughs> Okay, you can go further. But on this planet, where the, where the clouds come from? The, 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 ocean. the ocean! The ocean supplying all the water. So similarly like this, with the great reservoir. Of course, it's in salt water for another reason. But the fact is the water does come very mystically. How it suddenly becomes, you know, the salt, only the water is evaporating, isn't it? Forms condensation, forms, you know, rain drops, whatever they call it, water vapor or something. And they get it's amazing how it happens. Absolutely miraculous. Then it falls on the land and it goes back to the water, the ocean. But the real source of all that is the ocean. So whatever you find a little well, a little pond, a lake, whatever, comes from the ocean. And similarly, whatever purposes are served by a small well can be served by the great ocean. Where is the material which is like a little well? Like a little, little bucket or something. We're in the little bucket. And we're trying to enjoy that little bucket. Prabhupada and Spirit Master tells the story of a frog. A frog in the well. Have you heard that story? A frog in the well? Not all of you have heard it, maybe. I'm not talking very much Leela tonight. I'm talking on practicality. You, get, you have to get the foundation there first. You can't, you know, build a nice house unless you have a strong foundation. So this is all foundational stuff. So it's right at the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, this is foundation. Krishna hardly mentions the Gita in the Gita. That comes later. To prepare ourselves so we can really enter into that reservoir of pleasure. 
So, a frog in a well. I'm sure you've seen frogs. So, Mr. Frog, let's call him. What name should we give him? Give him a name. Come on, give me a name. Frog in a well. Huh? Huh? Dr. Frog. Who? <laughs> Dr. Frog? No, there's not much of a philosopher, is he? Frog in a well. Give him a name. Okay, Joe. <laughs> Easy name. Joe. He lives in his well. He knows nothing but his well. Like we're living in this room. You know nothing but how little he knows we live in. So Joe's in his well. Oh, my well. It's so big and so nice in my well. One day along is another friend of his name, Fred. Froggy Fred, Fred the Frog. Fred the Frog went for a holiday somewhere. He left the well, and he went outside the well, and he went somewhere else. And he had the shock of his life. Fred went to the ocean. He never knew it existed before. He went to the ocean, and Fred saw the ocean. My God, this ocean is so big compared to Joe's well. I'm going to tell Joe about this, this massive piece of water. So his friend, Fred comes back to see Joe, and Joe goes, Oh, welcome back, Fred. Where have you been? Where have you been, old folks off? And then, then, then you know, Fred says, You, Joe, you won't believe where I've been. You won't believe it. What do you mean, I won't believe it? I have been to a body of water. I have seen a body of water so big, so big, you won't believe it. And Joe says, Oh, he's bigger than my well. Joe, it's so much bigger than your well. And Joe can't believe it. It was something bigger than his well. He's like a scientist. Right? Can't believe anyone is more intelligent than man. <laughs> but the most humble people that have ever existed in eternity. <laughs> Isn't that the philosophy? Never in eternity. Has any living entity anywhere in the universe existed more intelligent than me? Right? That's basically what I said. Basically. They deny any other previous, you know, generations, or previous races, previous cultures, etc. They just dismiss them all as uncivilized, uneducated, barbaric, pavement, forest dwellers. Complete dismissal. And there's no life on any other planet, even if there is maybe some little amoeba or something. Very funny. So Joe was a little bit surprised. He can't be tired. It's not possible. If I will help something is bigger than my will. And you'll start to have this kind of thing that pops up. You know? So Joe says, bigger than my will. <laughs> bigger than this? Look at this! Joe, much bigger than that. Come on, Fred, it can't be that much bigger. Much bigger, Joe. Bigger than this! Oh, bigger than this! Bigger than this! No, oh, Joe, it's much bigger. How oh, much bigger? The big bang takes place. <laughs> and the universe is greatest. We all came from Joe the Frog. <laughs> the whole creation. We have to thank Joe the Frog for the material world of the world. According to Mr. Science, Dr. Frog. We have to bring it in since he did that man. So before we finish, uh, we've just started, as always, we haven't really got very far tonight in terms of say anything. Oh, I'm listening to that verse. So this verse is very significant, it means a lot, really. Um, similarly, all purposes of the Vedas are served to one who knows the purpose behind them. Krishna said, one who knows me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, beyond doubt, 
is understood to be the knower of everything. What more do you need to know? Krishna is the source of knowledge. Then comes in. The goal of knowledge. It's to know Krishna. If you know Krishna, you've already accomplished the purpose of the Vedas. There's no need to make any separate endeavor. You've reached the goal of yoga, the goal of tapasya, the charity, the goal of wealth, the goal of study, the goal of everything, sacrificing. You've reached the goal of everything. If one knows Krishna as he is, and Krishna's reservoir of passion. So if I, and this verse changed, you know, a little bit of change for myself. When I read this verse for the first time in the right light, I, I really was convinced that by connecting with Krishna, that by, connect, by entering into devotional service to Krishna, connecting with Krishna, the real thing we were looking for would be fulfilled. It's not money. It's not a nice house in Bonico. It's not a good education. It's not a nice family. These things we are we do look for. But that's not the real point. We, we're doing these things because we want to feel these emotions. We get spirit of happiness, freedom from stress, peace, loving exchange. By nature, every soul, even other species of life, are looking for this. It's the nature of the soul. And when we connect with Krishna, the real essence of all of our endeavors is fulfilled by connecting with Krishna. Peace, not just peace and freedom from stress, peace from material uh, and existence, but happiness, permanent, unending happiness, not affected in the material world by the moves of nature. It's still connected with this world. Unaffected by the duality of this world, Unaffected, peaceful even in the midst of turmoil, happy even in the midst of what would normally be distress, and experiencing love for Krishna and all the him. And desiring that when the person who knows how to swim, when someone's drowned, they want to summon another state into the ocean. So one who has this realization, their life is their only suffering is entirely for duty. Their only suffering is to see other living entities suffer. Not just filling their belly or putting clothes on, and that goes on, it's okay. But suffering is due to the statements of our real nature, our identity, and our relationship with Krishna, or our forgetfulness of Krishna. So they do everything they can to try to help us to remember that uh, we do have a relationship with Krishna. It's a loving relationship, it's not just reverence. They do everything they can to awaken that with us, both directly and indirectly. They try everything they can. So this great person has like that spiritual master, Shri Prabhupada, I forgot to do in the last program, but uh, I have here a beautiful deity, and you can come and see him, you can have him and her. He's a beautiful deity, of Shri Prabhupada, the founder of her, one of these great personas who come from the spiritual realm to this realm, to give us this opportunity to reconnect with the reservoir of pleasure, the supreme mercy of the God. So this deity of Prabhupada is very small, it's made of metal, and it's so beautifully done, and mold is so beautiful, the reproduction is so beautiful, so accurate. Everyone says it's the most closest deity of the Prabhupada they've seen. The is small. You can see his fingernails as clear as anything. With each and every individual neck bead is, is, is visible. The little tiny knot on his head is visible. The veins are there on his hands and on his face. Everything will be indentation exactly. Beautiful reputation. It was a gift from the boys in Moscow, no sanitary department in Moscow, sent to himself and others. As a, 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 a reciprocation, a loving exchange for helping them to purchase vehicles so they could preach Krishna consciousness in Russia. And so they did this beautiful um, replica Shri And they made it from matter. But when they went out yesterday in books during December on the streets of Moscow, 
They collect it up with the coins, melt it down the coins, and use those coins to make the spiritual thing. So if you want to come and see our creation most well, it really makes you realize who we're talking about. All we need is the association of great souls, pure devotees to the Lord, and the awakening in our hearts of uh, Krishna consciousness, which is there, it's something that just has to be awoken. It's not uh, something that is far. It is constitutional. Her actual constitution is Krishna consciousness, or the mood of service. Jogra said our constitution is service. So we see that constitution acting in this world as well, serving our family, serving our country, serving our senses. But the, 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 the proper the perfection of that constitution is to serve Krishna. So Sri Prabhupada and many great personalities enter into this world to remind us to take our service propensity, our loving propensity, our whatever propensity we have, and connect it with Krishna. So then we feel the presence of Krishna. And we feel happy, satisfied, peaceful, you name it. And anchors the shokshiti na koshiti. You'll no longer freak out when you lose your mobile phone. <laughs> you may still try to get it back because you're using it in Christmas service. It won't be quite the same. You understand everything is temporary. Life is, this is a life that's temporary everything. And you do all you can to try to assist the jiva, the living entity, to attain their eternal constitution and spiritual position in relationship with Krishna. So there's a bucket coming up now, I'm not sure what that's for. I'm going to disappear. Maybe, what am I supposed to do? What's the bucket for? It's not for cookies, but it's just cookies for you to all the devotees. Cookies! Wow! Fantastic, thank you so much. We're going to have cookies in a minute. I'm going to put the offer to the deities. How fortunate we are in the whole of Melbourne and the five million people, and maybe a hundred or two hundred people here, in this little tiny corner of Melbourne, and we're getting the chance to receive Krishna's Prashada. So powerful is this Prashada. Just by honoring Prashada, we can take the love of God. If you know the story, Lord Shiva, when he heard this, uh, Narayana, first of all, when he heard this, uh, how powerful Mahaprasad is, the Lord Mahaprasad. He so much wanted to get that Mahaprasad that Narada Muni went to Vaikuntha and served. He's been looked already sufficient. He served the will of Lakshmi for ages of time. Somehow to get her blessing so that she could deliver the mercy of the Lord from the lion. And eventually, she, when she said, You serve me so well. Please ask for me whatever boon you would like or the dear Naga. He said, I only want one thing. I simply want a little bit of the Lord's Mahaprasad. So Lakshmi Devi was like, Oh no! Oh no! Ask for something else. That's all I want. But I have to ask my Lord because I promised I wouldn't give it to everyone. So she did. And Lord Narayan said, okay, this time you made a big mistake, baby. But this time you give now, but not again. Don't make such a promise again. So when you make a promise to anyone, well, how can I serve you? You have to be ready. They ask you to do some, ah, uh, you have to be So she gave that man to Narada, and Narada, Honored some of that and he went into such ecstasy beyond imagination. And he was going around the universes, the spirits and the children. He came to Kailash with Shiva, in one sense, this in relation this was brother of Narada, who came from Brahma. He said, Oh, my dear brother Narada, what is the cause of your ecstasy today? Why are you so excited? I've never seen you like this before. So, oh. Oh, my dear brother, you will not believe my good fortune. Today I received the marvelous sign of the Lord Narayan. 
Oh, well, that's good news. Where's my share? Um, well, you know what the sounds like. You know, when you get some special prasada in the fire at night. <laughs> no one's watching. <laughs> so like little sparrows are looking around. You know, she may cross it and keep it away. Nothing there. Nah, all oh, gone. All oh, gone. What? All oh, gone. You know, you don't want to like it's happening like a kitchen. Not your brother. It's all gone. He put his hand in his face. Ah, one grain of rice was still there. Gave it to my shiver. Ah, that's good. 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 Ah, the whole universe was rocking as he was pounding on his drum and beating his feet on the ground in ecstasy. Oh, we were shocked. All the devils and the heavenly planets were rocking and rolling. <laughs> Not because of the beaches or the golden stones or anything, because those sheep were dancing like this, they were all going left and right. What to do? The whole universe is not meant to be destroyed right now. What's Lord Shiva doing? He's gone mad. What's happening? Poverty, poverty, quickly save the universe. What is going on here? She ran to Lord Shiva. Bravo, bravo, stop! No shoes. Damn What have you done? Oh, what have you done? I was experiencing ecstasy like never before. You stopped me. Oh, my dear Prabhu, the whole universe is about to be destroyed. I beg you, please, forgive me. All right, I'll never do that again. <laughs> my Lord, please tell me what is the cause of your ecstasy? No, she is. Baby, you can understand. <laughs> I today received a grain of Lord Narayan's Mahaprasam. Prabhu, Prabhu, I know better now. Where is my share? Baby, you are not entitled to a share. That was not good. Not good for policy. Clear that in mind, boys. It is not good policy when discussing your better hands. You are not entitled. She went into a rage. I am Vaishnavi. I am also the devotee of Lord Narayan. How can you say like this? Boy, your so called love for me is simply pretense. You don't love me at all. Fiend. I will now destroy the whole universe! You're so angry. Probably you've seen this in family life. Both sides. He was in a rage. Unless every living entity is entitled to this Mahaprasad, I will destroy the universe. What's the use of it? She didn't want to do anything about this. It was one step too far. She didn't want to do it. Luckily, Lord Narayan was aware of this precarious situation. He quickly appeared on the spot. The Kyam Parati was an Adishati, destructive form. The Kyam Yodam spoke to Dear Lord, please, please be assured, I will appear in this room. And I'll make sure that everybody gets the chance to get my knives. Yay! Mahatma Kibija! From the form of Lord Jonas. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we come from all of you. We have this chance to satisfy poverty, save the universe, and get your sheep off the board. Great Arjuna, Mahaprasade Bodhi.
Hare Krishna, please come up. Take the darshan of Sri Prabhupada, if you so will. Oh, thank you. Uh, that's not. Don't, don't say the same thing about him. No, you change it. But sorry about all the things we said about the song at the beginning. Um, we, we were misled to understand we were absorbed in the way to doing this and that. Thank you for coming, Marash. Let's see you in the garden or something. Thank you.